See you later, Gato. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. What is up, Gato Squad? Welcome back to the channel. If, uh, if you're new here, welcome. Consider subscribing. It's going to be a lot of fun today. So, uh, I wanted to bring you guys a very special video since I've hit a thousand miles in the car already. Uh, I want to show you guys my thoughts and my, uh, my uh, experience I've had with the car and uh, what I really think about it after owning it for a thousand miles. Now I've only had it for two weeks but I've been driving around everywhere to really get a good feel of the car. You know, I've been on highways, I've been on mountain roads, I've been in traffic so I got a really good flavor of how the car is. So uh, we're going to get started. We're going to take a look at the exterior, the interior, we're going to take a little drive and then conclusion. So uh, alright, let's go for a ride. Enjoy. Okay, so starting out at the front here, uh, main things I want to really point out here are the vents. So we got these uh, holes right here that vent right to the brakes. And actually you got right down here, right above the splitter is a nice big hole as well. And what that does is it produces a little bit of downforce and it also feeds even more air to the braking system. You have these very aggressive headlights here. To be honest, I kind of uh, prefer the headlights on the sport hatch. Uh, they're a bit less aggressive than this. This kind of looks like a dinosaur or something like that. I'm not sure, like a raptor maybe. But, you know, some people like it, some people don't. I don't mind them. They're fine. They work pretty well at night. And, of course, you got the red badging here. Type R and the H. Moving here to the side. We got this 20-inch uh, rim. And in there is my favorite part is the Brembo package. So we've got 13.8-inch uh, rotors with four-piston Brembo brakes, and uh, I can't wait to try them on the track. On the road, they've been very good. I can't complain at all. I have not experienced brake fade at all in my driving, and that's been, that's been pretty good. So um, one thing I do want to point out is that um, in order for this to be a good daily driver, you'd, I would recommend changing these rims out to maybe a 19 or 18 inch rim with a meteor tire there. So as you can see, basically the tire is painted on there. So uh, I'm actually looking into that right now as we speak. So uh, we will look into that and uh, we'll see what happens. Moving to the side here, we can see even more venting. So these are very aggressive fenders here. I love the way it looks on the car especially on the white, so it's white on black here, and you see these vents here, they do let air through there, and that's basically to feed air from that hole there into the brakes and out. That helps in aerodynamics and the brakes as well. Now to back up here for the side profile. Ah, uh, love the way the car looks here. So you got the wing right over here, and uh, a lot of people probably gonna give me some hate for this but the wing just makes this car pop I wouldn't have it any other way and uh, yeah I love the wing it's pretty cool uh, and of course you got the little red type R badge there and the three exhaust pipes that don't really make any noise but are pretty cool to look at I'll be changing that soon as well of course you got the little the red trim right there that keeps on uh, keeps the whole theme going of the red uh, trimming and yeah that's the exterior. Now before we move on to the interior, I did want to point out one thing is that videos and pictures don't really give this car justice at all. I feel like in person this car looks the best. I mean, it's, it looks so aggressive and looks so good going down the road. Uh, I wish I can show you guys on video how, how it looks, but you really have to see it in person. And uh, I'm trying to, I, you know, that's why I go to car shows and people see it in car shows. And they're actually, they change their mind as soon as they see it. You know, it's a great looking car sitting there, very aggressive, you know. At least we can all agree that Honda went bold and had the balls to actually make this car an awesome looking or at least aggressive looking car. Even if you don't like the looks, at least they went aggressive, not boring, right? So uh, gotta give kudos to Honda for that. Let's move on to the interior. 
So before we go into the interior, I want to point out here the handles. So we got this little button to lock the car. And to unlock it, all you have to do is push, press your hand here and pull. And that's the keyless entry. And I think that's a pretty cool touch that this car has. It's, it is a touring, the touring version, so uh, it's going to come with that. But it's pretty cool. So here we look at the door card, and uh, it's very nicely done. So it's got this like fake suede material here. Feels really good. Same goes for down here. I'm not sure how well it's going to wear. We'll see. I'm going to be driving this car a lot, like I have been already. But it's really cool, and you got this fake carbon fiber, which, you know, I'm not a big fan of fake carbon fiber, but, you know, it's done okay here, and I love this red trim right there. It accents the car really nicely. thing I don't like, plastic handles. Ugh, really? I don't like plastic handles, and uh, this has nice, eh, I guess they're nice plastic handles, but they're plastic. Most cars have plastic handles these days. It's kind of annoying. And then the switches, straight up standard. Civic Sport Hatch, Civic LX Hatch switches, which is again not a big deal. This is really a hot hatch. Don't expect to be, you know, a BMW or Mercedes in here, but you know, I kind of expected it a little better. That's okay though. And the piezo resistance here is the red seats. I love these red seats. These are awesome. So we got this uh, again fake suede material here. I can't. I I I, I love sitting in them every time. One thing I'm wondering is how wear it's gonna wear in, but a thousand miles in, no problems at all. We got the back here, nice type R right there. And if you want, you can put a harness behind it and uh, you can get your own uh, little custom seat belts if you'd like. But it comes with red seat belts. Look at that. That's pretty awesome. We got the special type R. Mine's number 177, so it's a very early number. And of course the passenger seat. Same as the driver's seat, looking good. One of the negatives I really want to point out of the driver's seat, and uh, you know, it's a great seat, don't get me wrong, but there's one little thing that I would change on it, and that's that uh, it doesn't have any lumbar support or adjustable lumbar support. Um, and if you look down here, it's only got really two levers and a uh, lever in the front here, and that's mainly to save weight. Now this has the height adjuster, and then this is this is the back adjuster, so it's just back back and forth like that. And I wish it had a lumbar support uh, adjuster, but eh, it's okay. It's missing on it, no big deal. I just wish it had it. So stepping inside, you immediately feel hugged by the seat. It's a great feeling here. And uh, looking at the driver's cockpit, it's basically awesome. So you got those stick shifts right here, steering wheels right here, very close together. I like that a lot. Very comfortable, but what I, like I said, the only thing missing is the lumbar support. It's got some nice aluminum pedals, same exact pedals as in the Civic Sport hatch, and then so you got the, the clutch, brake, and accelerator, and you got these really nice Type R mats on there. I'm not sure how well they're, wear, they're gonna wear in, but um, I'm planning to get some all-season mats on here, so hopefully it'll protect them a little bit, since these are special Type R mats. I'm Taking a quick look at the back here, again you have uh, some soft touch material here, it's not quite as soft as the front. Same goes for the for the elbow rest here, not quite as soft, but that's not a big deal. You don't get the same red leather seats, but you do have these uh, cup holders here that uh, are not in any other trim except for the Type R. Now the reason the Honda does that is because of really legacy, so every other Type R has only been a four seater car. Now they wanted to keep with tradition. So they basically took out the middle seat and uh, made this a four-seater only. So something to consider. One thing that I like is that they do keep with the red uh, seat belts here to keep on with the red seat belts in the front. Another quick look at the back. This looks like a fake carbon fiber here. It's not real carbon fiber, of course. And that's plastic and that's made to, uh, to save weight. Now opening up the hatch here. We're greeted to a lot of space actually. It is a hatchback after all. Got this uh, cover there, not a big deal. It's the same exact space as the sport hatchback, except that this has a subwoofer back here. It looks pretty big. It doesn't work very well. That's fine. Not a really big audiophile. And that's where the jack is. Under the floor, you're gonna find some more storage space and a fix a flat kit. I prefer to have a spare tire, but you know, it is what it is to save weight, they do that. I may get a spare tire, I'm not sure yet. Now, it is bigger 
here than the Ford Focus RS. That's something I did want to point out. So that's actually a more usable and bigger space than the Ford Focus RS and the ST have. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So looking at the driver's cockpit, the main thing I, main things I want to point out is that this leather wrapped steering wheel is awesome. It does have a flat bottom. Uh, it's okay. I mean, you know, it'd be okay if it didn't have it for me. It's not a big deal. It has soft touch here materials. Again, this fake suede, much better than uh, other trims. Quite lovely. And the main thing I want to point out really is that distance between the steering wheel and the shifting knob. It's really close, look at that. So from here to here, really good. Basically made so you could quickly shift, put your hand back on the wheel as you're supposed to do. So before we head out for the drive, let's go over the starting sequence. Press the clutch in, press the button. Right, so setting off in this car. Uh, it's in sport mode, which is pretty much the mode I always use unless I'm on the highway. On the highway, it was comfort mode. Um, before I continue to talk, let's uh, take this back road here, see how fast we can get it. eggs me on to just take the next turn faster, take the next turn uh, with more speed and you know accelerate out of the next turn. It eggs me on. It, it, that's why this car I feel like is perfect for my personality for the way I drive. Um, it's like it's hard to find cars like this that are made uh, this well right out of the box. I wish the exhaust was a lot louder. You end up just hearing basically what sounds like a vacuum uh, when the turbo is really kicked in. I wish it was more of a throatier exhaust and we're gonna be fixing that hopefully very soon. Oh yeah. As you can see, I've gotten used to the throttle. Oh man, it's really, it's really fun. <laughs> you, could all, you could also hear the, uh, the blow off whenever I stop accelerating, you hear the phew. It's really cool having a turbo Honda Civic Type R. Now purists would say that you know they prefer the NA engine. I'm kind of in the same camp. I, I do I do like I do prefer the, the NA engines and these type R and the, the type R's. We haven't had them in the States since the Integra type R unfortunately. But we do have the S2000 and uh, you know, I didn't know how I was going to feel about adding the turbo in the in this uh, enthusiast Honda. Usually Honda is known for their NA engines, but you know, I was like, I'll give it a try and man, thank goodness I did. This is an awesome powerhouse, you know, I talked about the engine a little bit before, 306 horsepower, 295 foot of torque. The numbers don't give it justice. This car just feels, it feels really good. I mean, it feels like a... And this is the best analogy I can give it. This feels, um, and I'm going to compare it to the old Civic Hatchback. Um, so the old Civic Hatchback Sport that I had, you know, 2017 Civic Hatchback Sport that I had is basically the little brother of this car. Uh, it felt like a happy puppy every time you, you started the engine, you know, you, you, it wanted to go, I mean, it wanted to have fun. And it was very fun and it was very, it was pretty capable on its own. Um, but this car feels like a like a wolf, you know, basically like you know an angry wolf trying to get out of its cage. You know, it's uh, you accelerate it, and it just goes, and it just wants to keep going, and it eggs you on, and it takes it takes you know when you take a turn slow, you know it feels good, but you know it has so much more performance to go, so you kind of want to get it, take it faster and take it faster, and you want to you know downshift, and you want to blip the throttle, and you want to just go. I can't wait to take this car out on the track. It's gonna be insanely fun. Um, I took the Civic Hatchback Sport on the track and that was really fun too, but this car is, I know is gonna be just that much better and I cannot wait.
definitely notice that. Uh, it's definitely fighting for trash in there. The back end loves to play around. Excellent brakes, excellent brakes. Yeah. And that's me doing my own throttle flipping. So good, so good. <laughs> so, a couple of things I want to mention. Um, this car, I don't know if you heard it, but it has an awesome blow-off valve sound. No, it doesn't vent to the atmosphere, but it does uh, blow, uh, it does sound really good when you let go of the throttle. Another thing is that it has variable ratio steering rack, which is the only uh, variable, variable ratio steering rack available in the whole hatchback range. So what it does is, at higher speeds and at slower speeds, it'll uh, make the steering rack uh, more precise or less precise, depending on what is better. As I mentioned before in the Sport Civic, in the Sport uh, Civic hatchback, uh, I felt that in the highway the steering was a little bit twitchy for me. I mean, it, I got used to it and everything, but it, it was good. But you know, this actually mitigates that. It makes it really, really precise at low speed and really good at higher speeds. Wow, this LSD is amazing. Limited slip differential. So that's another thing. This car has a limited slip differential, and you can definitely feel it pulling you around the curve. It is really good. <laughs> And as I was saying, it does egg you on. This is an awesome car. Oh, yeah. So, some final thoughts uh, when we're finishing up here. And uh, I just want to tell you guys, like I said, this car is the perfect sports car for me. I needed something practical that I could still use as, you know, you know basically carry stuff and you know, carry whatever I need whenever I need to. But I also wanted something a lot of fun. And I wanted something that would be good on the track. Um, I know I said this is the track car for the road. Well, it's, it, I should I should rephrase that. It's the it's the comfortable track car for the road because this has a ton of space. I'm gonna be able to carry uh, spare rims, spare tires, cooler full of stuff. You know everything I basically want for a track day. I'll be able to carry it. If this was a true you know race car, uh, it would be <laughs> it would be a it wouldn't be this spacious. It wouldn't be this comfortable. It wouldn't be this good on the road. So you know. Little rephrasing, but I still think this is a properly good, fun track car for somebody that wants to daily drive it. Um, just on that note, uh, for daily driving purposes, I do recommend that you downsize the tires and wheels. Uh, I would recommend 18 or 19 inch rims. I'm gonna be doing that to my car, this car very soon. I'm actually looking into it, um, so uh, look out for that. And I also recommend um, getting some good tires for it that uh, will be maybe all-season all tires or even snow tires if you can that way uh, for the winter this car will be, will be ready to go uh, I think for the winter actually this car might be pretty good because it does have a limited slip differential so you'll have extra extra grip when uh, when the roads do get icy if you do plan to drive the car uh, during the snow I don't think I'm gonna be driving this car around too much around the snow uh, our town doesn't use salt so I may just have some fun in it but uh, I'm not actually gonna be uh, daily driving this car that much so you know it, it's it depends on where you're gonna be using it for all right so that's pretty much uh, wraps it up there. If you guys have any questions at all, please put them down in the comments. I'm happy to uh, assist you guys with that. Um, if you uh, haven't yet subscribed, like I said, please go ahead and do so. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace out. They say